bleeding. Why are you even here? I'm always here. Oh, he peed! Who knew that this is the wet dream that would give him the most relief? Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 3, Episode 16, Top Secret. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 house videos. This will be Episode 76. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. Do a little dance! Mick, yo, yo, turn that back on! Don't shoot us. Don't die. You're supposed to be in clinic duty. Ex-Marine thinks he has Gulf War syndrome. Whoa, spooky! That was a spicy opener. So many questions. Why is House having these war fantasies? How did he see the Marine patient in that fantasy before he even met him? Is he ever going to repay his clinic duty? Let's hope these get answered. But either way, what is going on with our patient? Cuddy's mentioned he has fatigue, rashes, and joint pain, and thinks he has Gulf War Syndrome. This is a very odd condition that for years confused doctors and veterans everywhere. Around a third of deployed soldiers who served in the Gulf War ended up with a chronic multi-system disease that caused non-specific symptoms like the ones our patient has. There have been some interesting developments in recent times though. This study by Haley and colleagues found that the cause was soldiers lacking the enzyme that breaks down the nerve agent sarin. Many soldiers were exposed when a chemical weapons store was bombed in southern Iraq which exposed thousands of soldiers to the nerve gas. Even with military funding budgets there's still no known treatment that can help with the condition so i'm sure there's more to this than meets the eye let's get more clues maybe you didn't dream about this guy specifically you placed his face in the dream after you saw the picture more interesting question isn't what you dreamed but why i thought your dad was in the marines you think this guy has gulf war syndrome of course not do a full physical and recheck his blood for hiv hep c malaria schistosomiasis and t strain a bumani you get these black dots all over him I don't see anything. You sure it's not just scrapes and bruises? I know the difference between a rash and a bruise. Interesting that this episode is linking back to the previous app, One Day One Room, where we find out House was abused by his dad. Wilson, being House's best friend and moonlighting as his therapist, is trying to tell House that his dreams are telling him he wants a new relationship with his dad. Reading dreams for meaning though is pretty hard and there is a good reason for it. We have no way of observing them. We see seizures, we see and smell smoke, but there's no way of experiencing or tinkering with someone else's dream. That means there's no way to reliably experiment on the contents of a dream and not just the concept of dreaming itself. Even for dreaming generally though, the sleep science is in its infancy. What we do know though is that dreams help us organize our own memories. It could be part of the reason why sleep is so important for memory. Speaking of memory though, I've seen doctors on a few occasions being dismissive of patient symptoms and it's happening again here. As doctors, I think it's important we approach situations with a degree of humility and listen to patients. Science doesn't have all the answers, and so if you do, then it's not science you're using. Remember that many discoveries have been made in the past when a doctor had the courage to listen to patients and trust their instinct rather than the status quo. Like Barry Marshall, who didn't believe that ulcers were just caused by stress and discovered a new bacteria to eradicate and cure the ulcers. Having authority is one thing, but being overconfident puts you way out on the left of the Dunning-Kruger curve. You obviously exercise. My problems aren't caused by my workouts. Just because I can push through the pain doesn't mean it's not there. Besides low potassium, his blood work's all normal. To find out about any television or other media exposure, do a LexisNexis search and get a copy of his credit report. In between, give him a polysomnogram. Sleep apnea could cause chronic fatigue and paranoia. That's his third REM cycle and his breathing's completely normal. It doesn't take two doctors to monitor what's clearly gonna be a normal polysomnogram. You know what we could do. I think there's a problem in here. Open your mouth. 
The smell's not in the room. It's in your mouth. I wonder if a candida coated tongue could taste just how spicy this episode is getting. So many new clues, low potassium, House keeps on hinting about this media exposure, and now our man is harboring enough fungus on his tongue to start a corn factory. Chase thinks it could be a toxin for unknown reasons, but either way, here's my two-stage reasoning theory to crack this case. The patient would only start doing media gigs and getting exposure if he was short on money. He's struggling to reintegrate back into normal society as a veteran, and so work is scarce. That means he's had to pick up the generally undesirable jobs, which could have more risk. He actually got unwell a few months after he got back from deployment, so maybe it wasn't what was in Iraq that caused it. Maybe he's collecting old batteries and been exposed to lead. That's tanked his immune system, and that's what's led to his polar bear tongue. That's my theory and first diagnostic guess, but question for you smart people. What are batteries made from now, and how do they store charge? Answers down below. You can fake fatigue and joint pain, but you can't fake bacterial vaginosis in your mouth. We've ruled out HIV, diabetes, and any other endocrine abnormality. Get Wilson to biopsy his salivary glands. He's got parotid cancer. You're gonna feel a little burn. Biopsy's inconclusive. I'm gonna do a sialogram while we wait for the results from the additional blood work. I need that fusacin. I haven't peed in three days. I think the pill is the way to go. Stop it! Whoa, 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 House hasn't peed in three days. For anyone else, that would be very concerning. But healthcare professionals have the hydration of a camel in a sauna. In all seriousness though, if aliens existed, even they would know about House's love for Vicodin. One of the side effects of it is not being able to pee. That being said though, in a man of his wisdom and advancing age, the prostate gland can become an oversized nuisance, blocking the exit of urine from the bladder. How does the alfuzosin Wilson just prescribed him help? Help. It relaxes the urinary tract, which allows the exit space to increase so urine can be released from its muscular prison. Oh, that happens for house as soon as when urine sits in the bladder for too long, it can get infected or flow back up to the kidneys and cause an injury. If that happens, then sometimes we need to put a tube called a catheter in there to relieve the obstruction. I once got called to do this on a patient as a very experienced nurse had tried, but didn't succeed. When I had a look at our patient's equipment, it seemed like the usual pee hole was covered by some kind of hymen type structure. That can confused me initially, but it all started to make sense when I asked him this question, where do you pee from? At that point, he mentioned he always needs to sit as when he pees, it comes out like a fan from his scrotum. How is that humanly possible? Well, he had a developmental condition called a hypospadia, where the pee hole comes out from below where the usual spot is. I then went to catheterize him on a small skin flap I found on the scrotum, and the man looked more relieved than the royal family when Harry went to America. Enough about House's bladder though, what's going on with our patient? The team think he has a dry mouth causing his tongue infection, and that's because of cancer. Biopsies of his salivary gland haven't confirmed that theory though, so Wilson wants to do a less invasive test called a sialogram to confirm. That is completely the wrong order of things. It doesn't take a pacifist to realize that doing a gentle scan is preferable to shoving a needle in someone's face. Either way, we haven't really gotten any new information from the test. But if you're getting some new information from this video, then check out the channel membership. You get early access to new videos, access to exclusive polls, and to suggest a series and episode for me to react to. The first 30 members have a chance to win a one hour one-on-one -on -one tutor session with me on a topic of your choice and we currently have 29 members with just one spot left so press join to secure yours before it's too late i'll keep working tirelessly to make it worth your while besides my ocd i'm fit as a fiddle any other compulsions besides drinking massive amounts of water no you get up in the middle of the night to drink yeah. Unconscious people don't have OCD. They can't, however, have diabetes insipidus. The writers here have cranked up the irony levels to an all-time high, diagnosing an excessive peeing condition when you haven't peed in three days. Bravo. But what is diabetes insipidus? It's when you have a deficiency of the effect of a hormone called antidiuretic hormone. This helps your body to retain water by telling your kidneys to reabsorb it through special channels called aquaporins. If ADH isn't there, then more water stays to be peed out which then causes dehydration. You then need to drink more to replace that lost water, which is why Sloshy over here is carrying a water tanker to her appointment. It can be caused by head trauma, chronic kidney disease, some medications like lithium, or be genetic. The treatment would be to replace the ADH with a drug called vasopressin. Wait here, you need a CAT scan. Hey, could you turn up the music? 
Looks pretty good so far. Still can't hear it that well. John, can you hear me? If the pills didn't work, you may need a catheter. He's got cancer, all right. It's in his brain. At least six tumors, maybe more. He lost his hearing. This poor guy's brain is riddled with tumors, and you're checking his credit report? The VA scan of his brain. No tumors. Radiation's the only thing that will make tumors grow that fast. Wait a minute. It's not there anymore. Six tumors don't just disappear. One minute he's there, and just a trip to the corner store, and poof. He's gone. So what can cause this cancer's fear of commitment? In real life, the most likely thing would be that the original scan was mixed up with someone else's, as it would be insanely rare for them to just disappear. The team have already confirmed that isn't the case though, as he has a surgical pin in his skull, which was there on both his recent scan and the old one. That leaves two more options. Firstly, that it's not cancer, and secondly, that he has a type of radioactive material inside him that's somehow interfering with the scan, but isn't visible on it. I like the last option. What if he was shot with some kind of uranium-laced bullet that's still sitting in his shoulder? When he moves at a certain angle, the radiation emitted tricks the machine into thinking that there are tumors in that area by the emitted radiation, the exact point that the slice could have been. When he's sitting at different angle, the radiation isn't interfering at that point. And so the cancers miraculously disappear and never come back with those cigarettes. That's gonna be my second diagnostic guess. I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my legs. We're gonna figure out what's wrong with you. First, we need to know one thing. Have you ever appeared in any pornos? You certainly given us plenty of clues. I was right. He's excreting depleted uranium in his urine. I'm gonna die. All right. You should start treatment for the uranium toxicity, like you said. I don't feel anything. Paralysis is ascending. Oh, my second diagnostic guess is looking more likely. He has traces of uranium in his urine and now ascending paralysis. There could be a few different things that could cause that though, especially taking into account all his symptoms like chronic fatigue, sore throat, rash, hearing loss, probably brain abscesses, and now paralysis. The main culprits could be autoimmune like Guillain-Barre syndrome, sarcoidosis or MS, infectious still like HIV, polio, or diphtheria, cancer related like paraneoplastic syndrome such as Lambert Eaton or toxic like radiation or heavy metal poisoning. The episode title is top secret as well so what could that mean? Did the patient experience something at war that he can't disclose? How does that fit in with House's hallucinations, inability to pee and relationship with his dad? Maybe House's dad actually sent this patient to him and that's why House knows him. He saw the patient when he was young. House's dad didn't want him to know that the recommendation came from him because then maybe he wouldn't take on the case. Why would the patient be around House's age though still? Something doesn't add up. Maybe House is just still dreaming. You have a nice night. He's unconscious. His skin has lost all color and his BP and hematocrit are plunging. You can give me four units of O negative stat. House, his blood obviously didn't just vanish. In it's a urine catheter collection bag with a ribbon in it. What the hell does it look like? You're bleeding. Why are you even here? I'm always here. Oh, he peed. Who knew that this is the wet dream that would give him the most relief? I wonder if the bleeding was a clue now. The urine with the bleeding, maybe it's giving it away. What if he has vasculitis causing blood in his urine that we can't see? Or better yet, he's got hemolytic uremic syndrome. Maybe he picked up a gut infection that went under the radar and that triggered the body's immune system to attack itself, causing microclots in different parts of the body. It can lead to paralysis, kidney failure, bleeding, rash, fatigue, vomiting, bloody diarrhea, and fever. Doesn't quite explain the mouth or hearing loss symptoms though, but will be my third and final diagnostic guess. We are locked in. Have a nice Expect night? Yes, I did, thank you. The answer was staring right at us the whole time. As plain as the nose on our faces. He had it cauterized, undoubtedly, because they were both born with hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. He obviously has AVM. AVM near the spine caused the paralysis. AVM in his lungs prevented his blood from being filtered. Hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, you got to be kidding me. It's an inherited genetic mutation of blood vessels that classically causes these small red spots, especially on the lips and nosebleeds. You just need one affected patient to inherit it because it's autosomal dominant, and the usual complications are bleeding in the brain, lung 
lungs and gut. It doesn't stop blood from being filtered or oxygen from reaching the lungs though. That's going into astrology level science. Yeah, it's safe to say that the diagnosis was impossible to get. Pretty crazy. Now, if they find the malformations though, then they can clip them off and he should be back to marine training before you can say Dr. Mezzo loses again. Play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. Nothing that a few surgeries won't clear up. You lied. I simply chose not to share completely irrelevant facts. No wonder I couldn't place his face. You were practically swallowing it on the dance floor. You remembered him because he made out with me. Get over me. Oh, well, Colonel Copulate has been sourced, and all it took was House reopening a suppressed memory. How poetic. This episode was absolutely mad. I have no idea how this diagnosis produced this patient's symptoms still, but that was very fun to watch. It's a seven out of 10 entertainment. 2 out of 10 accuracy and 6 out of 10 diagnosis. This episode doesn't make sense until you watch the previous one where a patient gets a surprising talent from a brain injury here.